Let's talk about conservatives, DEI, and affirmative action. If I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. Well, well, that's the you wouldn't have done that. You wouldn't have. You no, wouldn't have done that not, before. That's not an immediate. No, you wouldn't have done that before. That's not who I am. That's no. not what I believe. It is the reality the left has but created I, 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 from losers like Charlie Kirk. That is the reality of what happens when it comes to DEI, and what he is remarking on is true. I would be terrified if I got onto a plane and I saw a woman uh, flying the plane, and I know that we have the United CEO saying that he just wants to fulfill a quota. He just wants there to be more women and wants there to be more black people. And he's not concerned at first with qualifications. Now, former Daily Wire propagandist Candace Owens. Uh, and most people aren't because I travel about 300,000 commercial air miles a year. Uh, it's pretty scary. Now, you get on a plane, you're looking in the gog, but you're wondering, hey, is someone competent or did they just check a lot of boxes? That's kind of scary. The former president's least favorite child. And it's the weakness that invites that aggression. Well, maybe they're focused too much on DEI. There's a concern at the FBI because they're dropping the FBI special agent requirements in the name of DEI. I'm just wondering if that has anything to do with missing an important drone that just killed three of our heroes, Congressman. And by the way, the national security issues go way beyond just this. And the question is, is this about DEI? Are you not hiring the best people? Are you hiring the most diverse people? We already saw what it did with stunt to the White House. They do. They went over the top with diversity. They hired a bunch of people that don't even like Joe Biden. They're protesting him. Is that causing quality uh, problems here? We had the pandemic. The workforce got crumbled, and they came back with that wonderful thing of diversity, equity hires. Instead of yep. hiring the best and brightest, now you're hiring people who are the first to put on a door on a plane. And <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, I don't want them. I'm, yeah. Like I said, I've, I've said it a million times, color of skin is irrelevant, competent, know the skill set, knows the job. And if that means it's a 60-year-old white man who's so white he looks like the cloud, but he can put a plane together, I love you, baby. To the band of buffoons. Over at Fox News. We have something that's been growing over over a while now, Maria. It's called the, the slow march of Marxism. It's been happening since the 30s. Uh, it's been, uh, you see, in, 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 in a policies like the DEI, which is basically a way of dividing us. Uh, th this has been a slow march, and what we're seeing today is just a culmination of, first of all, cowardice from, from those within, complicity, because we have Marxists literally in our, in our school systems that's, that's okay with this. This is what they've been training our kids to do. And even a sitting congressman who checked off every box on the conservative panic talking point bingo card by linking DEI programs to Marxism and communism, school indoctrination, young people hating America, and anti-apartheid campus protests, all in a short 30-second soundbite. But this is nothing new from conservatives. They've been fighting tooth and nail to prevent any bill, law, government program, etc., from being established that challenges their position in society. It is no coincidence that the tax breaks for the rich party is also the anti-DEI party, and conservative operatives and academics, if you can even call them that, know all too well that social safety nets and diversity programs threaten the fundamental mythology that has kept them in power for so long. The American dream is nothing more than a fabrication to blind the masses from the fact that working hard Following the law and unconditionally loving the country mean nothing if you aren't profoundly lucky and willing to completely ignore morality and human dignity to achieve success. Which brings us to this sad excuse of a man. It was a group of young black men, five on one. Looked like gang violence to me. It, it looked like what young black men do when they're supervised by a single black woman. And that's what they got going on in the Memphis Police Department. They've elected some uh, or put some black woman in charge of the police force, and we're getting the same kind of chaos and disunity and violence that we see in a lot of these cities that are run by single mothers. I don't hate or dislike black women, but damn it, I don't like or respect the way they're behaving. Kobe, not to twist your words or read too much into what you said, but being around young players energized you. That's not a statement about maybe you'd like to see some young players on your team? Wow. That, <laughs> you know what? That's a Bikram yoga stretch. <laughs> you stretched the hell out of it. Good job. Good job. I'm not even going to answer that. That's just silly. Racism is an issue in America, but it is primarily an issue for the poor. 
it's not LeBron James's issue. The one and only Jason Whitlock. While interviewing friend of the network Mark Lamont Hill on a recent edition of Fearless on Glenn Beck's ridiculously bigoted Blaze Network, Whitlock and Hill got into it about DEI affirmative action and college admissions at Ivy League schools. One analysis of graduation rates at Ivy League institution reveals that at Harvard, 99% of black undergraduates graduate within a six year period compared yep. to 98% for undergraduates overall. From what you just said, the audience would, might be led to believe that all the, all the analyses show one thing, and I've only found one to the contrary. What, the, the fact is, every analysis supports my claim, and zero analyses support the claim you made. If you can show one evidence that black graduation rates, th this is not an empirical study with, with complicated tools. The graduation rate at Harvard is 99% of black people. That is a fact. The admissions department confirms this. The Black Alumni Association confirms this. The, the faculty confirmed this is a, a verifiable fact. The truth is black people who get into Harvard graduate from Harvard, just like white people who get into Harvard graduate from Harvard. You can tell from the disgust on Whitlock's face that his slimy, disingenuous debate tactics will not work on Professor Hill, who knows the talking points and the facts, to debunk them. If I went to Harvard, I'd probably be some atheist idiot loser uh, and sitting around thinking that my whole life depends on some favor from some white person that thinks they're my God. In your case, you're saying you got a two, three at Ball State. You would not have excelled at Harvard because you had been overmatched at Harvard. It sounds like yeah. you might have been overmatched at Harvard. I don't disagree that if you put yeah. somebody who's overmatched in a school, they won't do well. That's not the argument. The argument has been that the people who have gotten into Harvard from affirmative action comprise that, that, that overmatched population. That an example of an overmatched student is the person who got into Harvard. That all these black people for the last few decades who have gotten into Harvard and Yale, et cetera, because of affirmative action, have actually been overmatched and they don't succeed. And my, my point is, not that the people who didn't get into Harvard would also do well. There's plenty of dumbass people who wouldn't do well in Harvard, sure. But the point is the people who got in with the affirmative action program didn't fail. They were not overmatched. And they graduated at a rate of 99%. Professor Hill is spot on again. Affirmative action and DEI programs were never designed to put people into positions where they weren't qualified. They just give already qualified people the opportunity they would have gotten if they weren't from an underserved and or marginalized group. No amount of Whitlock's anecdotes and bragging about his personal success changes the reality that black students who got into Harvard were more than capable and deserve to be there, regardless of any program that helped them get there. I'm simply saying that the mediocre people you've met from Harvard that are black are not mediocre because they're black or because they were let in wrongfully. I'm saying that they're mediocre people in every place and ain't nobody more mediocre you, you know, no one feels more mediocre than the person at Harvard who underachieves. Exactly. You don't have to look further than the absurd legacy admissions programs at elite universities like Harvard to know that mediocre individuals pack classrooms that more deserving students should be occupying regardless of their race. We'll leave a link to the full discussion in the description box below. And make sure you subscribe to Mark Lamont Hill to see more of his excellent commentary and content.